최근 영국의 한 방송사에서 한국의 초고속 성장 비결을 찾기 위해 현대자동차와 포스코를 방문했습니다. 취재를 시작하자마자 영국에선 볼수 없는 직원들의 행동에 경악을 금치 못했다고 하는데요. 어떤 점이 그렇게 신기했는지 한번 자세히 알아보겠습니다. South Korea is gambling on new technologies and this race for progress has enabled it to go from an underdeveloped country to 11th in the ranking of the world's major economic powers in less than 50 years. A meteoric rise that the country also owes to its very particular work culture. Officially, Koreans spend 52 hours a week at the office, but they often do more than 60 hours, almost twice as many as the French. In Seoul, the capital, it is not unusual to see the offices still lit in the middle of the night. Exceptionally, a famous multinational opened their doors to us. It's 4 a.m. at the headquarters of Hyundai, the Korean automotive giant, and several employees are doing overtime. Chung Sang is responsible for communication, a profession that is not normally practiced at night, except in South Korea. As I work in marketing, I have to do a press review. I select articles and I post them on the company website. I get up early and work early, but I think I contribute to the good functioning of the company because I provide essential information. This morning, Chong is not the only one working, and others have spent the entire night in the office. In this restroom, a dozen employees catch up on lost sleep as best they can, lying on these benches or in these specially designed chairs. Here it is common and surprises nobody. I, mean, I really don't know why they were sleeping here. <laughs> Probably they came too early, so they needed somewhere to rest. Yeah, I don't know. Chung Sang finished his press review before the big rush of the morning, and he also finds a quiet moment to take a nap. For the well-being of its employees, the company has invested in luxury, state-of-the-art massaging chairs. When I work all night, I often come here to rest. These massage chairs really are very comfortable, and I'm grateful to my company for installing them for the employees. Today, Chung Sang is going to work more than 14 hours. Per week, he works more than 60 hours. As for holiday, he is only allowed 10 days a year, and it's somewhat frowned upon to take them all. This infernal pace was set in the 1960s to revive a country that had been ruined by the war. But recently the government is trying to reverse the trend because spending more time in the office is not synonymous with efficiency. Korean workers are among the least productive in developed countries. Hello. So for the past two years, Hyundai has been implementing publicity campaigns and American-style methods to streamline working hours. This morning, Chung Sang participates in a meeting with the director of his department. Among those taking part is a strange guest, this cube. This is the company's latest attempt to limit the length of meetings. You turn it on, then choose the length of the meeting. Five, 15 minutes, even an hour. Today it will be 30 minutes. And that's the time I'll need. It's a start, but old habits are hard to change. With or without a cube, meetings usually overrun and employees continue to work an unreasonable amount of overtime. And worse, in South Korea, the boundary between private and professional life is often blurred. And even after work, many employees spend more time with their colleagues than with their families. We head to Guangyang, an hour by plane from Seoul. It is here by the sea that POSCO, the fourth biggest steel producer in the world, has set up some of its factories. Five square kilometers dedicated to the metalworking industry, a city within a city the size of an average Parisian district constructed from scratch by the multinational. 6,500 employees work there, entirely closed off from the world. The firm imposes an almost military discipline, almost completely opposite to the French model. 
It is 8 a.m. and their days all begin in the same way, with a gym session and slogans that glorify the company. And it's time for the POSCO motto. Employee dedication is the foundation of POSCO's success. POSCO will grow if all the employees respect the security rules. POSCO is the best. Tai Sung, a good soldier, has taken part in this ritual every day for 20 years. It is important to chant these slogans. It allows us to keep a morale of steel. Tai Sung is a laborer. He takes care of the maintenance of the machines. On average, he works 12 hours a day, and that's without counting the unpaid overtime. But here, this is normal, and the key word is devotion. And all day, the employees respect certain codes to show their dedication to the company. Most important is an extreme politeness. This morning, Tai Sung made an appointment with his spare parts supplier in order to identify a problem with a broken machine. Just change the remote control, the rest works. The matter is quickly resolved, but before leaving his supplier, Tai Sung doesn't hesitate in bowing to show his respect. This is compulsory in South Korea. When you meet someone for the first time, you have to bow, and then you offer your hand. It's the same with the elderly. With relatives or subordinates, you can greet them with a wave. But to greet superiors, you have to bow, to show respect. In South Korea, this is important etiquette. The second important rule to follow is respect for the hierarchy. In Korean companies, you cannot question decisions made by superiors, even if they are wrong. Everyone must stay in their place, and to remind employees of this, again, there are codes. Tai Sung and his colleagues have a meeting to take stock of the ongoing repairs. When they address one another, they do not use their first names but their titles, as they do in the army. Manager, how is it going with our supplier at the factory? There's a problem with the measurements. It will take three months to do everything again. Head of reporting, what should we do about safety standards? Head of planning called and set to ask the reporting assistant to assess them. In the eyes of the West, this protocol can seem comical, but in South Korea, it's very serious. Calling each other by our job title makes us all responsible. I think it is better for the efficiency of the team. The hierarchy is better respected. It's a little after 7 p.m. Tai Sung and his colleagues have dealt with all their urgent problems, so tonight there'll be no overtime and the employees can go home in peace. But leaving the office does not really mean leaving POSCO. The city that surrounds the factory belongs entirely to the multinational. The stadium, schools, houses, shopping centers, and even public transport. Everything was built by the steel giant. The conditions are ideal for us and our families. Everything we need is here. The company has planned everything for our well-being, in this city and at the factory, which is good. It gives us more motivation to devote ourselves to our work. Has everybody collected their tools? It looks like a normal work day, except it's Saturday. The POSCO employees are doing charity work for their company to help local farmers. We've come to repair their tractors on their iron gates. We've come to help because they are poor and can't afford to do it themselves. In South Korea, the economic boom has caused an exodus from the countryside. Many villages have been left empty and impoverished, so Tai Sung and his colleagues put their skills to work. Look at the space between the door and the wall. You see, it doesn't close properly. Let's fix that. It's good what POSCO are doing. The charity work is great advertising for the company, and it barely costs them anything. It's the POSCO workers who put their hand in their pockets to fund the operation. The employees all give 1% of our salaries towards the social activities of the business. With this money, we buy what we need to work, especially iron, which we buy from POSCO. It is true that our lives revolve around the business, 
I work and live in a POSCO apartment. I bring up my children here and I finished my studies here thanks to a grant from the company. So it's normal that I give them my free time. It's a fair exchange. 누군가의 노고가 있기에 한국이 매일같이 발전할 수 있음을 다시 한번 느낍니다. 대한민국의 모든 근로자들을 응원합니다.